Let's do it. <clears throat> Nick, let's make things interesting. Let's do it. Let's do it. Guys, welcome to uh, Let's Make Things Interesting podcast. My name is Randy. I almost looked at your camera. Nick Keogh, hi. <laughs> I know. You were looking. I was like, is somebody over there? No, we're looking at our cameras here. <laughs> Nick, obviously, taking up more space than I am. You know, the guy just, even in camera shots, can't can't split it evenly. It's unreal. I'm a big man. It's unreal, Big man. plan. It's unreal. Have some respect. <laughs> All right, we got a lot. Set that up. <laughs> you didn't. It wasn't your fault at all. I was. I was actually more of it. I'm like being upset at something that I could have easily changed when I was here. But no, I like it. I think it's like it's accurate. We got a nice setup here, man. Yeah, this is neat. This is what we've been waiting for. I think so. It's we took. I like. I definitely like this better than the other, than the sitting on the same side of yes. the table, like <laughs> like an awkward date where you're just like, hey. <laughs> Although I will say. I had uh, I th- I don't know if you've been here. I think you went here for like Tolly's birthday. Iron Age, the Korean barbecue. Yes, place. I was. I was the only guy that went. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like sweet. That place good. is awesome. It's and good. like that type of place or like a melting pot type of place. Yes, is where I think it's acceptable to like sit on the same side of the table now as l- someone. Let me tell you what. At at the stage of my relationship, if I don't sit on the same side as my girlfriend, she's like upset. But even like at like if you go to like Broken Egg or something. Or McDonald's. Okay, okay. That's a little weird. Booths. 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 Top right. Booths. Yeah. Broken yeah, yeah. egg. Oh, okay. Broken egg booth. I thought because we sat at the table. Yeah, yeah. So in chairs, no. Like a, just like a 7 to 10 to $12 plate place. Okay, yeah. Where you're just like scooping lunch. Then no. Then that's too fast. Yeah, yeah. Anything over $18. Sit at the There's same. The mark. Sit at the same booth. Eighteen. All right. Wow. Sidetrack. Or, or, or <laughs> sidetrack. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, let's make things interesting. I guess this is like a good. That was a good sidetrack to kind of set the tone for the podcast. You know, I was. We were very like concerned about like hitting thirty minutes. You know. Yeah. Like, keeping topics. Like we're gonna do that still. We. I feel like we always blast through thirty minutes. We do. I'm like we got chill. Yeah. And so we get we got to chill a little bit. Like I was listening to some podcasts. Like I was. Checking out the H three H three podcast, which I like a lot, and they do video and like uh, the thing about that I don't like though is that they always show videos, so it's really hard to just listen to because mm. they're they're commenting, they're literally doing like H three H three live with guests, so gotcha. they're just like <laughs> watching videos and like pausing and being like, "Come on, dude!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a little hard too. Oh, I love Ethan, man. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's really funny. He had a video come out yesterday. I watched. I really enjoyed it. So, anyways, today we got a lot of things happening, Nick. Valencia is approaching. Yeah. So dream hack. I have Quickly. A, I have a dope shirt. We gotta talk about that. We're going on a Euro trip. After did you get that. your shirt? I did. Is so. medium the right size? It is, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Nice. Thanks, man. Um, I ordered it for him. And, and we're that's that's <laughs> that's why we're going on a Euro trip afterwards. We got you, me, and, and Ryan heading out there. Um and then we've got a lot of things in like the esports to talk about. We got a lot like OB fifty three, like yeah. feels on that. A lot of people have been talking about things. Uh so there's a lot. But first we're gonna actually like set the tone with a little bit more of a just a interesting like kind of oh, let's, let's let's ease into it you know icebreaker so it's gonna be called what are you watching what are you playing what are you reading whatever it is like what do you what are you into this week basically mm. TV show you know Twitch channel I uh, I actually I watched two episodes of the show called Glow on Netflix dude I just watched Glow yesterday did you really yes bro <laughs> I finished episode three last night on the plane oh no way you like it right it's I do funny. I do like it because uh, Golden Boy actually I saw him tweeting about it oh really and I was like. All right, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I, I actually enjoy it. I think it's pretty funny so far. It is pretty damn funny. And I like that it's an all-female cast, uh, pretty much. And there's just, like, kind of male, like, side roles, like antagonist and protagonist. But... Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like a different time. I'm not exactly sure the it's time crazy. setting, but it's like it's definitely like 60s, 70s, because like the women only play secretaries, and they're all kind of like true. upset about the types of roles that they're getting in TV. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Which I don't is know. why they're excited about the wrestler thing. Yeah, it's the way they're dressing strikes me a little bit like towards it's like the, the 70s, it's the 70s 80s. leotard that yeah. like rides up right below your ribs yeah, to make your hips look right. long. Yeah, I was watching that sh- that that and like I was the, like, "Call on me!" Like the David Prids music. I was like, video. "Mackenzie, this is Air Club Prince. vibe in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like that Lifetime class. Oh yeah, oh yeah, in the 70s it with is. the leotards. I'm like, why can't we wear those? Anymore? It is. It's, when did those go out of style? Seriously, I mean, the the day that is acceptable for men to wear leotards. Uh, is I think now actually Nick. Damn no one could give you crap. You could just tweet. Twenty seventeen. You could turn that into a viral tweet if somebody gave you crap about <laughs> that, dude. Denied because I was wearing a leotard. Unreal. How dare <laughs> How you? How dare you? The gall on this man. Now, that's cool. So I was actually gonna say glow too. So that was actually 
kind of serpent. So I guess if you're listening, like, go, in half. go watch Glow because clearly yeah. it's kind it's of cool. pretty neat. Yeah, it's Netflix. I like Netflix because they keep making high quality shows. Like at a certain point, yeah, you feel like that's a cool transition for them to have made. Oh my god, it's amazing, dude! Like they're becoming not not a commons man like HBO, but they're becoming <laughs> like <laughs> they're close to that, right? Kinda, yeah, they're essentially like shows that. Sure, it's not the same production value as like a Westworld or a Game of Thrones. And yeah. it's not the same gravity of a situation like an all star cast, but it's just below that. And it's like a lot of good shows. It's like I mean, so for many. Me, I'll look at like Breaking Bad for that type of thing, right? Where yep. it's not like I was watching Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones is when I sure. discovered those two shows at the same time. And it's like they're very different in terms of Game of Thrones. Like they're flying around the world. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Clearly, you know, that show can be carried off production value alone. It's not, I think it's a good story as it well. Is. But Breaking Bad was kind of the opposite, where it's just just a good story was yep. carrying it. And I was like, it's not like crazy production or anything. It's just really good and to good, watch. Good acting as yeah. well. Brian Cranston is like in that role. One of I think that's one of the best roles in television ever. Maybe one of the best cinematic roles I've ever seen. The yeah. way he, pl- I mean, what a dynamic character. I mean, I haven't seen him writing, do anything different. But yeah, he was nuts in terms of writing and like performance. He just that was such a crazy role. He played it to perfection. So. Uh, we were so into Breaking Bad. Um, anyways, okay, yeah, watch Glow. Netflix is great. Esports, dude, around the world. Upcoming esports. We, this is a section I want to do to like let people know what's what's the haps on like esports. You know, just so they know what to tune into, what to watch. For sure. Maybe there's a Capcom event going on. Maybe some injustice. Maybe. You know, but but we have no information on that right now. I always I will watch <laughs> an, almost anything at a professional level. Yeah. Like the other day. When we were coming in to cast, I, I don't remember. I think it was we were in here to cast, but there was some like mobile game that was. Dude, I remember. Play. It was like <laughs> I was just like it was one guy on stage, and it was a basically it was like Fire Emblem right, AFK basically. mobile game yeah. where it's just like it's playing for him, and this guy's just on stage, just like critically looking at his iPad, and I'm just like, huh, <laughs> this is an eSport. People, and I mean, like I'm down. I'm sure there's something to it. There's obviously some element to it. That's why this guy's on stage. There's some skill involved, but right. like, I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. But I will watch any any esports that I see on the front page or like any big viewer channel. Like I love I love all kinds of tournaments. Like I watch the Dota International every year, and I still don't understand. You Dota. Still don't know I'm what happened. Getting happens. closer. Yeah, I still every have no year, idea what Dota is. I feel myself getting closer <laughs> to figuring out. Is it like I don't even I played the first I played one game of Dota and I I never played again. And this was recently. I was like, I'm getting into Dota. I'm, I'm learning more about esports. Like, this is one of the biggest esports. I, I should be knowledgeable about this game. I played, and I can't tell you how lost I got. It was, like, not even a game. I was, like, lost in the woods. I was like, I was like, <laughs> can I even die? I can't find anyone to die to. I don't know how to shoot. I don't know how to buy an item. I don't know how to go back to base. I couldn't even figure out the most simple, basic things. And maybe that says a little bit about me, but I think that says a little bit about it's Dota tough, as well. It's tough, dude. It's definitely Dota's definitely difficult. I whenever I've played, I've always had somebody to kind of hold my hand in terms of play, and they were like play eighty carry. That was like the easiest role. He's like, right. no, if you play support, you're gonna muck it up. Like I'm gonna play it support. Just play eighty carry. I support myself because all you have to do is like you know <clears throat> auto attack people, and I'm like, right. all right, fine. But like he was telling me where to go, what items to get. That's my thing. Like even like with League of Legends, we got our friend Brandon, who's like challenger in League of Legends. Right. When I played, I played with him. Right. He wasn't like. Q now, E now, do this, do that. He was just like, I was just like, what do I buy? He's like, buy this. And then he would kind of let me do my thing. Right. And That's... he just, he just, he, he, I feel like League of Legends is, is accessible on purpose. And I think Dota 2 is almost like inaccessible. The on... map's bigger. I think one of the most difficult things about MOBAs is the items, like knowing yes. what to get. And Dota, there's like the secret shop, which I don't even know if you figured it out. <laughs> Bruh. There's another, sh- so there's a shop no in your base. for me. And there's two shops like out in the map. That you have to go to to get like the really good stuff. Wow, I you definitely have to, you didn't have to get risk those. like going in the jungle to a shop. Oh, definitely, which is kind of cool. That is a cool a idea. It is definitely cool. Definitely didn't hit that shop. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even hit the shop back in the base. I swear to you God, stayed at the Kmart. At I home. swear to God, <laughs> thirty minutes of my forty-minute Dota game was trying to figure out how to get back to base. That's another thing. Every Dota game I've played has been close to an hour. Yeah, and Small, I think it's I, I, I maybe I it's quit. Just potato Elo because like people can't put the game away. I quit. I couldn't play. I literally left. <laughs> I did not have enough time. I did not have enough time. I sat day. down with an hour to play some Vidja, <laughs> Vidja games. What's funny is that's actually why I stopped playing Conquest and Smite, dude, because it was just taking too long. I haven't played Smite forever. I got to get back to that. People are like, Evan, where's the Smite? Where's the Smite A to Z? It's hard to think about Paladins all day and then play Smite and be like, 
a pro, you know what I mean, or an yeah. expert at anything. It's I mean, it's hard to watch our own Smite esports, and they literally happen like a hundred feet over there. Yeah. So it's just, it's I don't know, man. I'm always like a one. I'm like a one track guy, kind of like. I just love. I, I do still love Smite, and I keep up with how ish the teams are doing. I don't watch every game, but I'll right. be like, oh wow, Energy's in third this week. Right, That's right. pretty crazy. Yeah. Like I wonder what happened there. Type of thing, and that, I, I keep up with my favorite players, like my boy Anister. That's that's yep. still my guy, so yep. I'll still watch his highlights and stuff like that. And you see him at lands, and yeah. that's the cool thing. Like you're gonna know, you're gonna know exactly all the stuff you need to know heading into Valencia to like be interested in the matchups, right? You know, kind of know who's third, who's what. You know, we're doing. Plus, the... we got a flight with Agro for like you know 18 hours. <laughs> yes, we can <laughs> ask him, I guess, or maybe Agro will be a Paladins expert. We never know how that <laughs> that plane ride's gonna go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess you know, moving into this man. We have DreamHack coming up. I want to talk about DreamHack. But but before we do that, let's talk Paladins for a little bit. And, like, OB53, let's let's jump into that. They're playing on OB52 at DreamHack. Right. So everything that you're going to see there is going to be the last patch. But this patch, I, I've been gone for, like, a week. Uh, I was on vacation. How how's, how have things been shaping up? Like, what's the vibe in the community? Like, what are your feels about OB53? Um, I think mostly the, the pros, I think, have been scrimming mostly because I haven't yep. heard too much feedback. Uh, about OB53. Some people like it. Some people don't. Bitey's a lot of just kind of like why right. sort of things for some changes. He didn't <laughs> sure. feel some of them were necessary. The EV ones, because um, I played, I, I mostly just played Tessa because I've still been grinding console, which is still on 52. Right. So I haven't played a ton of 53 on PC yet. And even on PC, it's like as soon as a patch goes out the door here for us, it's mm-hmm. like I'm on to the next one. Like I'm yeah. already like, my, I, my brain's already switched gears to the next patch that we're playing, which is 54. Of course. Of course. Um, but yeah, I think uh, overall people are still adjusting to it. Some positive, some negative. Some positive, some negative. The EV was like an interesting one that I was curious EV's how that was going to shape yeah. up. Like, have you have you gotten a feel on like if EV is actually better as a result of the change, uh, in the projectile speed, losing the bonus damage, or if she's like worse, or if it's just different, or? I think it's different. I think it's mostly a lateral change. Uh, most people switched from sure. uh, reprieve to wormhole. Okay. Um. And like I said, so that's kind of like a different, that's a big swap. It's like eh, people were just starting to get used to wormhole or to reprieve rather because yeah. wormhole was the thing and now it's back to wormhole. And I don't know. Yeah. I, ha- I haven't played a whole lot of Eevee myself. I never got super into the reprieve thing. Mm. I See, I love reprieve. And I thought I felt like every time I played Eevee, if I wasn't playing reprieve, I, I was giving myself uh, like a, a disadvantage in the game. I don't know. That's how I, I honestly felt about it. I felt yeah, that. I think Reprieve was definitely easier um, to play. And, and Wormhole has its benefits, but, you know, at a higher level of play, I think a lot of people know how to, as a team, focus on an EV and where she's going to blink back. With the projectile speed, though, she doesn't have to get as close to do as much consistent damage. So definitely a, a bump towards Wormhole direction. I don't yeah. think it hurts Reprieve, but I think it does help Wormhole because you could shoot from far away a lot easier and then blink immediately on like a low target for sure all right so dream hack dude first dream hack for you man first one. First one i watched the other one from a distance this time last year i was just it was actually just me and anatoly in the office pretty much i know i know i remember that and it was because he just was like right after you got hired for right? Smite. pretty much or right pretty after much I got right hired. You were getting hired i was doing an internship still but yeah, it was basically right when I got hired, right when I was like figuring out what I was gonna do. Right. When I was not an intern anymore, right. and I was like, Paladins was right. like the thing that I was gonna do. So I was learning the game, I was just grinding it every day with Tolly, watching the games, like that type of stuff, and just practicing and learning. Dude, DreamHack is insane. It is. I don't. I don't know if you've. It's like I don't know if you've been to a land. I've never been to a land before DreamHack, and it is literally yeah, that's crazy. Your first one was just that big DreamHack and and it is. It's fifty thousand people okay and uh don't what if it's like five thousand i'm almost hundred percent sure it's 50, like fifty thousand million fifty people. million billion people uh and they're all lined up like ants in in a in a farm and they are essentially just shoulder to shoulder blankets pillows uh monster energy drinks every single type of of, of calorie uh, co- like sugar coma inducing <laughs> beverage or food that you can have, and all of that on top of these high end big time com- desktop computers, not laptops. Nobody's running. And they laptops bring them, there. right? Yeah, and they bring. You see these guys carrying up escalators and like stairs. Their whole computer in their like you know big old like uh, 
what are they called? The Maxnomic chairs, like the big gaming chairs. The DX racers. Everywhere, dude. It's like. How do they transport all that? Dude, I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Obviously, a lot of people, most people are European. Like, there's not a lot of Americans yeah. or people from other countries that go there. So, like, but it's like you, you can can't, drive. You can't collapse down a DX racer you and can't, just throw bro. that in the trunk. You can throw it in the back, though. I honestly, that's how I got mine here in uh, in Atlanta. But it was it was like a the most interesting thing about DreamHack was was not like being in Sweden. It wasn't like doing the LAN and the conference. It was seeing like the dedication of people to attend LANs. I just have never, I didn't even know that was a thing. Out. Yeah, I, so it's so it's like a big. I I still haven't even like seen what it is. So is, is it like a big convention center? Big convention center, and then there's stages for the esports stuff that's going on, right? Yeah, think of like the desk that you don't want to sit at, like the desk that's like too small and like too close to somebody else. Like think of like the worst version of like a like an airplane flight, like the middle seat. Gotcha. Every seat is a middle seat next to another middle seat that is just lined up <laughs> on uh, like the entire convention center in rows. All the way back. So you got the esports stages, but then there's that huge area. Exactly. Where it's just for fragging. Yeah. And those areas persist throughout it. So the esports stage are only on one level, one floor. Uh, at least that's was like, in Sweden. is there just wires everywhere? It's like everywhere. They, they they have it set up pretty pretty just, cleanly. Just like go straight into the ground or something like that. Yeah. And again, it's like they're so small, but it's because like the DreamHack sets it up and like everything has its own power supply and, and internet. I mean, they've got to have like tri trillion gigabit internet uh for all those computers trey billy <laughs> trey billy church god church dude how much do you pay to go to that do you know like if you I just want to go and frag i would guess like a couple hundred bucks mm. that's what i would guess to reserve a seat for the i mean day. honestly if they i i, I, get I don't the know middle seat part but that sounds like it could be kind of fun like you get a squad and listen man you're literally uh, it's like a sleepover it's like you know you're with your boys yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally all day gaming that's it i've done that like with my friends like i'll bring all my crap to my buddy's house and just set up that's dude. when PUBG came out when i was teaching him the game and just <laughs> set up for a weekend dude i mean it's fun but like how long can you go that's the question it's just like know. so unhealthy a lot of people got a lot i got i got mad good gaming stamina I, i've i've done you some do. unhealthy days you do you do i've had i've had nasty days of wow i've had nasty <laughs> 16 hour days of smite Back in college when I was getting into it, like, I had days where I didn't have class, and I just conquest all day. Yeah, That's just did. what I did. Yeah, and I mean, some people, they go back to a hotel, like, and you reserve your shit, or you, like, you yeah. lock it up, whatever. But, like, some people, they just sleep in their chair. They just, like, they're just, you know, when they're playing. Heard they're all playing. kinds of things go down in those chairs. And then they sleep. Oh, man, some people had porn. We were walking yeah. by. They had porn through. Now, I don't know if a guy was, like, masturbating or pleasuring himself, but we do know that there was... <laughs> Clearly, like, dude, watch porn. Because you're going to get guys like that who are just like, I don't care. F like, it. I don't know you. It's part of my ritual. Part of my ritual. It's how dude. I frag, baby. Yeah. <laughs> See a little titty and then uh, <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shoot a little chest, you know? Shoot a little head. <laughs> See a little head, shoot a little head. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's, how I, that's how I maintain perfect accuracy. God dude. bless. <laughs> it's like always on the mind, your visualization. Yep. Like, he's just, head, head, I get it. It's so funny. All right. <laughs> so, we have an esport tournament that we're doing there. There's a lot of cool things about it. Like, who do you think is the favorite to win it, Paladins wise? Um, Who are you giving it to this time around? It's well, we 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 got to think it's going to be the finals run back between D sixty nine and Gangstars. Sure, that's damn near fifty fifty, right? Um, just on any given day. Again, we got the sub thing. So D sixty nine are bringing a sub, right? Because they need to have a sub, not because one of their guys isn't coming. From what I understood, right. Nobody's having visa issues. It's just some commander on gang stars. But I mean, Dialer is a good. He played, played really well. well with them that one weekend. He has played well. Um, and then they got. I think they have NTBs as their other sub. I'm not. I'm not. Can't remember exactly who their sixth. They man. are bringing in NTBs. That's yeah, right. He's That's the right. sixth man. Um, yeah. It's just uh, until somebody, you know that that has to be the finals until somebody else proves that they deserve to be there. Do you think this is the year that, or this is the tournament? That somebody proves it. I mean, you know, we, there's so much Kanga talk getting coming close, from Kanga. And I think Cryptic there's, are getting There's so much close. talk coming from Cryptic. I mean, those two teams in particular, where we're talking about, you know, what's the biggest upset potential? Who do you think? Who's on uh, their side of the bracket? Gangstars and Cryptic are on the same side of the bracket. So Gangstars will have to beat, or Cryptic will have to beat Gangstars to get to the finals. Um, their yes. set against D69 at the Masters Land was very, very close, very good, I thought. In a lot of situations, but they brought out the Mega Potion Pip, right? I mean, yeah. they did. They did something unique. They did something different. Cryptic are known for that. There's a lot of champions that have not seen love. This is going to be a weird land because it's not. It 
The Last Land was just so Bomb King centric. It was. It's going to be very cool to see, not that. Yeah, anybody, but yeah, him. Anybody. <laughs> he's still he's still good. He's still going to be played a lot. He's still going to be a top. I don't and know, another thing is, pick. does this hurt Kanga? Was a big uh, was a big thinking point for me because they had such a good Bomb King player in uh, in Digidog. Digidog. Yeah. It was like, how do we say his name, by the way? I think it's Diggy Doge. Diggy Doge. Diggy Doge. Diggy Doge. I have no idea, man. Diggy Doge. Damn I don't know. I feel, I feel like he gets Damn Diggy Doge. Yeah, how would you say if you're an Wait, that was bad. Australian. Diggy, Diggy Doge. Diggy. Diggy. Diggy I don't know. Because some, some, sometimes they say Diggy and sometimes they say. Diggy Doge. Diggy like Doge. Didgeridoo. Diggy Doge. Didgeridoo. We'll call him Didgeridoo. Yeah, because. <laughs> Didgeridoo. Yeah, I like that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he was. He's an insane bomb king, and they were. They were confident to the point where they were like, if we got first pick in the first game, mm-hmm. we would have won the set because we would have got Bomb King more times than they did. But, you know, that's 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 I think that's a loser's logic, and that is good Maybe. because as a, as a when you lose, if you're a competitor, you need to not blame it on yourself. I mean, you need to blame it on circumstances to keep a healthy ego. Usually, sometimes if you blame it on yourself in the right way, you could use it to be understand your weakness yeah. and and move forward. A lot of people though. They they find that little reason like man ball didn't bounce our way you know oh, I mean yeah. that's why it's like and and that's true but D sixty nine they won a lot they beat those guys the same exact guys you couldn't beat without bomb king so it's clearly not just bomb king that is the deciding factor the the na- the dangerous thing to me is that I think when when D sixty nine lost H R X when they were crying you know a couple of them were really upset it was it was we made some mistakes it yes wasn't. that was the cool thing to me it wasn't like oh it was this or it was that or it was lag or my yep. headset it was just we made a couple of mistakes see that's the thing that i think d69 that's why i, I personally think d69 are poised to take this one and it, it is going to be up to kanga to prove them prove them wrong uh it's going to be up to cryptic uh to be honest i think cryptic could be the biggest uh, underdog for me i think they're the black horse in this one um, because gangstars are weakened, dude. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna perform uh, with without Sun Commander. Yeah. And you just you can't. It's like it's like a variable that none of the other top teams have. Top of the fact of practice is limited, so <laughs> practicing with a sub. And like, are you gonna bet that that's gonna make you better? Like, Dialer's gonna. It, I would almost almost say like you're lucky if you stay the same. Yeah. You're, you're lucky if you don't out. drop. You know, like because it just of all the factors, getting them used to it, playing in a land environment. Maybe Dollar's never been to land. Yeah, but then you look at Bonker. And it was it was a good fit. They... That's what I'm saying. That was like that's why Bonker such a, became such a big name, right? Yeah. I mean, this guy showed up out of nowhere. Game seven, turned it up all all series long, yeah. all tournament long. So, but that was nuts. Game seven on Frog Isle. Going like a twenty to one streak yeah. or some craziness right Literally there. Literally just like hopping off the map. He's knocking the best players in the world off the map with Impaler Arrow. I remember we had a An we had ability a... that like barely works on a good day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I remember we had that conversation with Bird at the end that we were, we were sitting up uh watching the Smite finals and we were like, So what's what's going on with Bonker? He's like, Oh yeah, we're we're taking Bonker. Like we can't we can't not, you know, yeah. him after this. You know, he he put on that kind of performance. It's where you can't forget about him. So that's what one of these teams need to do. It's up to Kanga and Cryptic in my eyes. Uh, to shut up and play and prove it, prove it on the the realm, yeah, uh, in the realm apparently. Um, Smite is such a good one of that. Prove it on the battleground. That's just that's perfect. Yeah, in the <laughs> realm, we just we call it the realm. I don't know. We have like nine maps. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> prove, prove it, it on, on the, the bright marsh, dude. Isles, falls. Exactly. I'll see you it's in beach. I'll see you on the surf at beach, dog. <laughs> it's hard to sound. <laughs> I'll see you on frost. I hardcore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so console wars, another cool thing that's happening there yeah. as well. The consoles, like you've been grinding console a lot. You know, fifty thousand dollars on the line. The first like initiation of the console scene in Paladins. I want. I mean, what's the biggest difference for you jumping into console so much uh, away from PC? Uh, you looking at Tyra's, mm. Victor's, Skies, like the movement. Skies OP on console. There's huh? a uh, yeah, but she's not playing competitive. That's the weird thing. <laughs> the thing about console and i found this in smite it's like i can't do as much right but at the same in the same vein i don't need to do quite as much because my enemies are almost limited in their movement stuff as well right Right. so they're not doing as much crazy you know zooming around all different directions and stuff so i don't need to be able to aim like that which is why it's better for Tyra's and Victor's and skies when movement's more predictable and easily tracked the characters with the higher sheet dps are gonna are gonna succeed. Yeah, there, and there's there's no. You're right, and that brings us to a really interesting. <clears throat> we don't we don't haven't seen a ton of those teams. Yeah. We've seen them. We haven't seen them against each other. It's gonna be like kind of the wild wild west there. 
see who comes out. And Ruckus is, I think Ruckus is going to be kind of a god on console. Really? Just because he's he's good on PC. He's picked quite a bit. Yeah, he's good on PC. He's close to first pick on PC, and he's like the console character. He's just like this big mean right HP pool that does a lot of damage. Right. So I mean, they're they're yeah. they're in a really. I wonder how much of the console wars though, because the first console Smite World Championship was just taken by Envy. Granted, they worked hard to right. mechanically get there. But how much of the game knowledge, I think, because Smite's different, where mm. I think the game knowledge is probably More 60 important. to 70 yep. percent of the game versus sure. just like 30 percent mechanical. You know, I'm just kind of. I'd switch that there. in Paladin. Right. It's uh, there is the game knowledge, but it's like, oh, shield wrecker. Yeah. Good. Now Good. I need to be able to hit the shots. Yeah. Then it's all on you. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm wondering because there is some, you know, I'm not washed up PC pros, but like PC pros that aren't playing super high level PC competitive anymore. Right. Have that knowledge. And the draft and stuff like that, so I'm wondering if they're going to be able to to take it just based off their knowledge. I, I think if somebody comes through with like a like a gang stars level draft, like where they're they're actually drafting and like tricking people and like not just letting you get whatever you want and yeah. taking things away and like building different comps, that could be a definitely a decider because it's little experience on the table. So whoever yeah. brings a bunch of it, but from what I've seen, taking a look at the drafts, uh, everyone's kind of gotten what they wanted, you know, and it does it doesn't ever seem like there's Somebody's not getting a Victor or a Tyra or getting that Ruckus or getting, you know, an Anara, which is pretty good on console as well. Somebody's yeah. grabbing a Pip. Acrobatics Pip is just, you know, amazing on console because he brings the mobility and he's the easy splash damage for his, his left mouse button. <laughs> Shoot and beat. Fox has wanted to nerf that for like eight years. Fox hates Acrobatics Pip. He hates it with a passion. That's his vendetta. But you don't get to hate things when you play Knesset. You don't get to hate that. <laughs> It's not a right you have. That's his. Thought. You are hated enough. Yeah, acrobatics is to Vox as Barrick is to me, and then <clears> Hipfire <throat> Victor on console just, I don't know. Getting killed by Hipfire Victor, I'm just I feel cheated. Yeah, I do feel cheated a little bit. I'm like, why is this the most viable option? Listen, just holding right trigger. I feel cheated until I play it and then I don't do crap on it and I'm like, well, I thought I was gonna just go eighty and zero. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out that way. Okay. Anyways, this brings us to an interesting conversation about vertical mobility. Um, you know, I'm going to do a video on this. I probably video might be out by the time this is out, but uh, around vertical mobility champions and like the discussion around, I, I guess the fact that they exist, the fact that every champion that comes into the realm has to compete with them. Um, should they, the fact that they're often some of the most popular champions, um, yeah. and the direction of which not only the design, uh, of new champions should follow. Uh, but the current redesign or rebalancing of current champions should be in regards to vertical mobility. You know, for, for, for example, you have Androxus and Eevee in a flank role, and it's often been really hard for champions who just don't have the ability to traverse the sky or traverse upper ground or just get to places as fast as them to be picked by the high-level competitive pros. Right. Um, and part of that is... I think there just has to be a precedent set from the designers mm. of where where's the line with right. the vertical mobility and uh, how much can be tolerated in the game and a lot of a lot of things you know you look at how much iteration Paladins went through like sure. trying to figure out what kind of game it was a lot of characters got reworked there's a lot of legacy characters in the game that mm -hmm. don't make sense a la Grover yep it's just a, it's just a, he doesn't make sense as a healer but right. that's what he is right now right. and I think over time you know that presence going to be set over time I'm I'm excited to see where paladins gets smoothed out to be because i mean right. i've played smite through the the gauntlet right where a lot of big changes map changes these changes reworks all that stuff and i've seen it just like slowly become the more polished game that it is yes you know some will argue that of course but there will always be people to argue a game being good or bad but i i just once once we get to that point where it's kind of smooth sailing we know what we're trying to be and we're just putting more stuff into the mix around that i think that'll be a good spot for the vertical mobility where that ends up i don't know so just just basically finding a like a standard like a right. like a, here here's your average here's yeah, your you've got like here's your median line at one end of the spectrum you've got Call of Duty at the other end you've got Lawbreakers where sure. the whole game just takes place in 3D space exactly and there's a there's a it's hard there's yeah. a certain element of that and it puts you got to find the balance of not putting off too many people versus inviting enough right. people in who like that challenge right yeah I mean it's 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 interesting the most the most I think thing to question here is moving forward does it help or hurt to have uh vertical mobility like one of the things that a lot of uh people have asked for is sky to get vertical mobility to compete with evie and androxis it's one of like her most requested things yeah. in the community but like the fact that you 
the answer to other champions being good and like vertical mobility is to give this champion vertical mobility. Look at that like down the line. It's like power creep. Then everyone has vertical. But then this next guy has vertical mobility. And if you try one champion to be unique and cool, like I could tell you the coolest champion right now. This guy comes out. He's a fire breathing dragon. And okay, Drogo's already a dragon. But let's say he's like an <laughs> octopus and he's got eight guns. You get to shoot with eight guns and paladins. He is so dope. He's fast. He can like slither around. He could tentacle you and throw you down. So it's like McCoa hook, but like even better because he'll toss you here and here, do damage four times and then kill you instantly. But he doesn't have vertical mobility. He may not get picked up. So the, the key is it's like if everyone has it, you're almost forced to keep doing it. Sure. And until you take it away or, or, or like put it at a standard that's like, okay, they've got it, but it's really good on this map, but like not a need to pick on the other map. I feel like that's another thing. Like it hurts it, us. It very greatly affects level design. Like oh, yeah. Vertical mobility in mind. And if everyone's got it, then the map designs have to change overall. And, you know, you look at Bright Marsh, where it's not – it's not super necessary to have that type of stuff. It's not. And it's uh, it's it's a it's an interesting balance, right? There's a lot. It's there's a lot that has to go right. There's a level level designers, game designers. Like there's so much when you kind of like we're 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 on the inside, but it's almost outside looking in at all these different moving parts. Totally. And just getting them to kind of see the same thing, be on a unified vision, is it's gonna be tough. But once we get there, it'll be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well. A lot of thoughts. Not sure exactly how that is going to work out. Of course, we have a we have a new we have patch show tomorrow. Yeah, we do. And so this, if it goes out today, with a new character, we do have a new character. Uh, I think we're let's save it. Let's save that one because we could talk about it. I don't. I feel like this will go out after the patch show, but just in case, I'm amazing. I can get it out today. I don't want to spoil. We don't want to talk. But about it's going to be fun. Said character. Can we spoil anything? I don't think we can spoil anything. I don't even know what's actually. There's like some skins and stuff. Can't say anything. A lot of. A lot of. What is this? Ob fifty four. There's a lot of. Yeah, this is gonna be. It's gonna be a patch. It's gonna be a patch. It's gonna be a patch. Heck of a patch. Heck right, of a patch. We'll tune in. If it One comes out today, patch. this is just a teaser. That's gonna be a heck of a patch. Okay, so let's. So here's here's where we switch it up, dude. Let's make things interesting. We're going on an official break. All right, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna be right back with. The second half of this and what it is, we're going to talk about customs. We're going to talk about international customs. We're going on a Euro trip. Uh, it's going to be more casual, of course, obviously. Uh, customs slash, like, traditions. Slash traditions, exactly. So uh, it should be interesting. We looked up some funny ones, some really interesting ones, like watching some videos earlier. Uh, I'm excited yeah. to talk about that. And, again, this is, like, the other aspect of, of let's make things interesting. We want to include, like, more just, like, topic discussions as well. If you guys have interesting topics or things you think would be fun for Nick and I to, like, bring up or discuss or just hear our thoughts on let us know, comment section below. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Welcome back. Break is done. Feel refreshed. Oh. I got my beauty rest. How do you feel, Nate? Great. Fantastic. What are you going to talk about? Dude, we're talking about- You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about customs, dude. Because I just looked it up. I know. That's true. You did. It was really interesting to watch. I can't wait till you bring that up. That's, that's a really interesting one. I want to talk about customs because, Nick, people don't do things the way we do in America all over the world. That's right. We and, live in a little bubble. And traveling is a very, very eye-opening experience because you see how people live differently. For instance, very common, well-known Spanish custom, siesta. At 2 o'clock, <clears throat> everyone in, in Spain, <laughs> basically, goes home. They, they shut their work down. They leave, okay? And they, like, take a nap. They chill. They basically chill for till 4 o'clock, and then they reopen. That's, like, a thing I've, I've seen... Or I've just kind of gotten the the vibe from from around the world that just working in general is a more laid back experience. Oh in terms yeah. Of people don't work as many hours in the week or as many days. Most people do. I think four on, three off. Yep. They've got the siesta. They've got way more vacation. They get like three maternity of leave. Vacation, like dog. you, you fuck that kid. When that kid's eighteen, you come back to work type of <laughs> exactly. thing. Exactly. Like it's just way more lax than it is here. Yeah, we'll save your cubicle till he graduates college. Then you can come on back. For yeah. us. we'll have. Uh, you could save that paperwork till then. It's 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 like a very interesting perspective on life because in America the the hustle and bustle gets to you. I mean, especially I'm from L.A. So like, the hustle and bustle here is like. It feels like a foreign country here because a lot of people are very laid back and in the approach. Yeah. Uh, like, really easy, like, to settle down kind of early. You know, a lot of people, like, I notice, like, get married really early here. And also, like, just do the house thing. They do the kid thing, like, really early. And in L.A., it's like, 
dude, it's like you're, I don't know, everyone just has this mentality of like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm on the phone, I'm driving here, I'm doing yeah. this. It's because it's, cause it's a big city and there's a lot of people, and it, it's natural when you're, in a, a lot of people going very fast and busy and always rushing to places to be in that like frenetic I think, zone. I think LA probably moves a little bit faster in terms of like progressive thoughts and stuff like that, and I think yeah. that goes a little bit along with- That's true. The general trend is people having kids and houses and stuff later, or not like houses less at all. Sure. Nowadays. Sure. Because um, I don't mind. I mean, my parents are from the Midwest. My dad had my older brother, I think, when they were like 25, 26, so like basically around your age. Right. Younger than me, two years younger. Yeah. I got a two year old. I got two year old Nick by my side. Yeah. He's half my height already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. That's not looking cool. Come on now. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, man. But you know, the truth. The truth is, it's like it's interesting looking at customs because it lets us open our mind to things. Like, yeah. for instance, like, just thinking about space. Like, you know, how often do you really, like, think about space? You don't really. Like, every every now and then, I'll see something and I'll start thinking about it. I'll be like, damn, like, oh, wow, I totally was going through my life and didn't think about that. You know, it's like customs. They kind of do that to me as well. Yeah. So let's let's talk about the one. We're going, to, we're going to Spain. We're going to Italy. Kissing on the cheek. This is something they do. Not only is that a French thing or is that like a <laughs> it's 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 Europe they, thing. they do it in they do it in France, uh, but what's interesting is they also do it in Latin America. That's really where, huh? And and if you go to South America, I have a lot of South American friends and colleagues, and like my uncle and, and parents have all very interrelated with South America. Right, kissing on the cheek, connection, touching. It's a very common place thing, and I like that. I mean, I just think that that's like trying to make out. I mean. Not unless you're into it. I, I know you're probably not. You're probably not into that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell okay. no, man. Hell, Hell no, man. Yeah. yeah, no, no way, dog. Uh, I ain't trying to do nothing, man. I just came from cross. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that tricep right there. Oh my god. Heck yeah, dude. Starting the get, lighting, dude. Trying to get the gains, bro. That's it. CrossFit. That's where I've been flexing at. this whole podcast. You really? <laughs> <laughs> you're just literally in the gunshot. It's like, you know, Evie. Yeah, I mean, she's she's good. She's bad. Just getting the flex on, dude. I like it, man. Get your workout in. I've been doing abs this whole time as well. <clears throat> Just crunching my stomach. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, me neither. That's my ab. That's my ab sound. Uh. But seriously, bro, what do you think? Kissing. We don't do that in America. But I think um, it's like a vibe. Do you think we, we're we going to stick out over there? You're going to stick like, out. W- will I? I will too. I will too. In Italy, I will stick out. But I'm Italian is my thing. I feel like you I'm won't not, stick out in Italy. Maybe really. like a mannerism wise, I would stick out. There's a really interesting custom that I actually would no, actually might have you stick out. What I'll mention later on. We're not there yet. Okay, We're still on we'll kiss. get there. We're still on kissing. But yeah, I feel like if if anything's gonna make me stick out, it's either how I'm carrying myself, how I if I speak loudly or something mm. like that, or too loudly. Mm. I don't know if that's like a thing over there or just like a mannerism thing. Mm. Mm. I, I feel like in terms of my look, I am Italian. I, I feel like I. I don't know. Maybe I'm not taller than the average. I, I don't see you and think Italian, though. Really? I don't know what I think when I look at you. I just <laughs> see your hair and it's just an like enigma. <laughs> an enigma. You are. Scott could be whatever the hell he wants. You are just this ephemeral, like, star that is like space. Essentially, that's because you just only were into the AM. Hashtag code pretty hair for 10% off. <laughs> and uh, and basically, I'm, I'm just always looking at just the galaxy when I look at you. Like, you're like literally the stars. I'm above it all. You're my sun and stars. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. In Japan, another interesting thing that they do, greeting, like kissing is part of the greeting there. But in Japan, they do these these you know, bows. Yeah. You ever seen, you know, you don't watch anime, but you don't really need to watch anime. But it's like a sign of respect. It's like a greeting. It'd yeah, be like I had a, small a, I had a bow. Korean friend that they would bow, like, when they when we were we were at their house, like, chilling, we'd be, like, gaming or something. And then when they would hear the parents get home, Oh my would, god! They would drop whatever they were doing, sprint to the garage door, and just like bow. They were all like lined up in front of the door and bow to their dad, at the dad as he was like coming in from work for the day. And it was really weird, like awkward for me sitting there, like me and my little brother. Do I go bow with was, you like, guys? Do I need to bow? <laughs> like, is he gonna get mad if I bow? Is this not? Is this like a family thing? Like, right, I was, right. I didn't know what to do. And my my one of my buddies was just a troll. He he told my little brother Dom, he's like, you need to bow. Like, you need to go bow. And, my brother, like, he went downstairs, like, all by himself and just, like, bowed to his dad. No. And you could tell his dad was just like, <clears throat> what the hell? Like, we didn't, like, communicate because the yeah, parents were. little white boy doing. I don't know if they spoke much English. or We just didn't communicate. So it was kind of like an awkward thing. What were you, five? Was was I was five. I was probably more around the realm of, like, 12, okay. 13-ish. Yeah. All right. Somewhere in there. 
You didn't know if they spoke English at like 12? Well, I mean, they just didn't speak English sure. around us. I don't know if that's because they couldn't. Got it. Got type it. of thing. Because their kids all like spoke great English. I, it was probably, I would, I, would, I would anticipate that it was probably on purpose that they didn't speak English in front of you. Because they probably just wanted to keep family matters private. It's very, Maybe. very private. Like Japan in general, and, and like Korea, I don't know much about Korea. My sister's dated a lot of Korean. I've had Korean friends. Um, but it's like, I feel like there's a level of privacy that goes on uh, in terms of their social interactions to where like kissing on the cheek would be like absolutely blasphemous. Yeah, like if you see probably. someone kiss them on the cheek, like if you even touch them when you first see them, that's like way too much. You know, and if you hold hands in, in Japan, you are set. This That's like your babe. You guys have yeah. been like... <laughs> doing it for for a year if you hold hands that's what everyone <laughs> thinks already you know what i mean it's like that next level so i don't know it's interesting i like the kissing on the cheek though because like a lot of south american friends it just feels very warm very nice greeting gotcha we could all we could all do that I'm, i've seen some people do it here like depends if you're close enough see they do it with everybody that's what's cool yeah it just it, it's a feeling of warmness everywhere you go that's what i like about it all right we, we spent a lot of time on that one though uh but if if you know you start kissing me down the halls man <laughs> it's okay. Uh, tipping, dude. Tipping. That was awesome. That was really fun to see, like, Thiel especially. They were Thiel freaking out. Thiel tipped the guys at Best Buy when they went and bought their mouse. <laughs> You're kidding they me. Bought the, they tipped the guys at Best Buy. And they bought a mouse and they tipped the guy at Best Buy. Oh Those guys, God. like, the Gangstars dudes, they buy, like, a full set of peripherals. That's what I don't care. Every time they come to a tournament. I was like, how many mice do you have now? Do you lose them every flight back? I mean, that's the I question, I don't know what too. happens. I don't know what happens. But, yeah, they tipped the guy at Best Buy. Because Bird is Bird is Swedish American. He hasn't I, he hasn't lived here for a while, from what I understand. But he was like trying to like help them along, and he was like, "Yeah, you kind of tip for everything." I think meaning food, and then Thiel, I'm pretty sure, took that, went to Best Buy, and tipped the cashiers at Best Buy. <laughs> but that doesn't even make sense. You don't tip for everything. You don't even tip for all food. Like if you're a fast food, you get In and Out Burger. Yeah. You get like McDonald's. You don't tip. Did he give a tip to the McDonald's guy? I throw my change in like the little That's whatever disrespectful. It is. Oh, no. I thought you were throwing your change at them. <laughs> Make <laughs> through the window. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like a little, like, like, wow, Nick. You know, Habitat for Humanity jar or whatever. Oh, like, okay, throw okay. Throw my change in there. I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the but you don't do it like as out of responsibility. You do it I out do of it kindness. out of the fact that I don't want to carry change. Exactly. To be so, honest. So the idea is like tipping is, you know, going to a foreign country, it's always interesting to see how they tip. And those mistakes happen all the time. They don't really, do they? I feel like they do. Like, it, you, you, it takes a, like a pre-planning person to go and look online it's not hard but it just takes someone who pre-planned to be like how do they tip how do you tip in italy i've heard it is it's it's included in like the <clears throat> wait staff's wages Ooh, you don't need to tip it in right you don't tip so in rome waiters it's, it's all included waiters and taxi drivers are getting spoiled with foreigners leaving tips and are now often expecting them but you don't need to tip in Italy. You're probably already paying a supplement through the servizio, servizio, which is the service charge, right? Your restaurant bill. Or the coperto, the cover charge. Right. I remember the coperto. So there's a service charge, and then I think their wages aren't like $2 an hour like a wait. A wait the reason you tip here is because the waiters and waitresses are paid like two fifteen an hour or something like that. And then basically what happens is your tips are calculated alongside that with how long you've worked. And it's, you know, how much money you made divided by how many hours you work. And then if you didn't, break minimum wage you had a really bad day on tips or something then they will compensate you to get you up to the point where you made minimum wage for the amount of hours worked to got it that's how it works yeah. and, and some and some restaurants are different like if you go to a really fancy restaurant obviously that's not the case um but like your general run of the muck i can't I, there are some restaurants i don't understand they just go for it. like some restaurants should not allow you to tip like we know that restaurant that uh a bocado burger my god they have there's this burger restaurant and they basically they, you walk up, you order, and you feel like oh, you're gonna, you feel like you're place. gonna pay. Yeah, okay? that place so you, is you backwards. feel like you're gonna pay because they take your order at a counter. You try to sit at the table, like no, no, you order up there. So you go up, you're like, okay, I'm ordering at the counter. You pick your thing, and they're like, all right, how much is it? They're like, oh no, your waiter will bring it to you. And I'm like, well, why did I just walk up here? Why did my waiter take my order at the table? First, first weird thing. You go to the table, no waiter shows up. There's no waiter. Basically, what happens is about. 10, 15 minutes, whenever your food's ready, you get your food. You eat your food by somebody. Anybody brings you your food. It's not even, there's no interaction. It's like, this is your food, this is your food, this is your food. You sit there, you eat it, you're done. Then somebody comes up. It's like, hey, how's your food? I'm your waiter. Give me a tip. And you're just like, wait, what? You, did, you didn't do anything. That was 
why am I tipping you? It just, it feels bad. I, I don't want to tip them. Yeah. But I also don't want to not tip them because they're like, is this system so weak that like I have to tip them for them? No, to- their system's backwards there. Jeez. That's the one thing I remember. It was really good. Really? I was like, well, we went there that one time. It was the only time I went there. You were there. I think yeah. it was with Ryan yeah. and yeah, his yeah, sisters. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> It was like it took us forever to get our stuff for like figure out, and I'm just sitting there like, "What are we doing? Yeah. Like, am I going to this counter and order this burger? <laughs> Is this guy getting me? Who? Mo- it took forever. I think on top of the fact that it's like a backwards system, yeah, it like took us an unordinary amount of time to get our stuff. Just burgers, like two too. hours, burgers like and that. fries. Why yeah. is that like? Yeah. Anyways, okay, dancing, baila, bailando. Yeah. Okay. Dude, I, I'm I'm a big I'm a big dancing fan. In America, we have this. I mean, it's kind of like I don't know if people are still doing this, but like we went to the we went to the club the other night. Yeah, are people still really grinding? Is that like a thing? oh yeah? That's like a thing. So hundred percent. So just I saw a guy that I, I think it's like the worst dancer you are probably the more you lean on it oh yeah because like i have you totally. know sometimes you know i'm down to do it right but like sure. other times like i have my moves i want my space babe i'm, I'm trying to i got a little something i'm trying to do right trying now. to peacock right basically <laughs> show you know what i got <laughs> i got something to do i need some hey, space right now hey but like if you don't know like if you're not that great of a dancer that's probably an easy go-to thing for you and i saw one guy you know this was later in the night but like just not even grinding, just aggressively dry humping, and I'm just like, oh my! Don't tell me he was thrusting, Nick. He couldn't have been. No, it was thrusting. It was. Oh, it God. was a full like oh, no. six inch gap closer, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow. Man. What the funniest guys I've seen of that are the guys I saw this one guy. He was on and his. The look on their face is like, I'm oh, killing it right now, dude. It's that's the worst. Killing it. That's definitely the worst part. Like smooth, like thinking they look at smooth, like kind of like. <laughs> Eyebrows, you know, crunched up. It's yeah. Like, mm, yeah, like, I'm getting this. This girl is <laughs> mine in an hour. Oh, 10 minutes after this move. Uh! And the funniest part is that you see these 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 guys, and, I'm, you yeah. know, they're not always white guys. I mean, some white guys, you know, Nick, for example, you know how to dance pretty well. Um, but, you know, you see some guys who just don't really have it yet. They maybe haven't had that exposure, and they're on their tippy toes. And I'm, like, trying to get, like, an arch down. So I call this, like, the sandpaper. He's basically... Going up and down on her, and I'm just I'm oh, just grinding. Yeah, okay, but, I've seen this. But, but I'm yeah. just like on the tippy toes. Yeah, I've on seen the tippy that. toes, man, that. and just like not enough. There's no like real rhythm. There's no, no swag. I'm just no. He's like, <laughs> it's like I, there's no power from that position. It's like you know I'm, I'm doing all this crossfit. It's like bro, you gotta you know you gotta sit back. You know use use your legs. He's using all calf, and I'm just like man, I, good luck to you, bro. You're gonna get tired doing that. It's funny. <laughs> we used to go to this this hip hop place back in uh, in L. A. and it was literally just a hip hop. It was so cool. It was like you would love this place. And uh, essentially, there was always that one couple of couple of white guys, <laughs> and they were dancing pretty funny. It was it was you know it was pretty much a predominantly like I wouldn't say like ethnic, but like there was a lot of diversity in the club. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, but there was always always a few. It was very very funny, man. Um, but but in in other other countries, Spain, like Latin America, like um, I mean, dude, dancing is like. Almost like an art. Almost like how you were just describing earlier. Like, yeah. like let me do my dancing to show you how good of a dancer I am. Right. That's what I think. Like when you think of like salsa, it's like they're together, but they're like still a little bit apart. They're right. doing their thing. Right. It's about like, like the movement of of actually dancing, not like being sexual. You can yeah, you can separate them, and they both look like they're you know they're dancing, and it's yeah. like a good thing. Versus yep. like you separate two people that are grinding, you're just like, what the hell are you doing? Oh my god, dude. Yeah, I have this one. It barely works together. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. apart. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you see the if you take the girl out of the grinding situation, she looks okay. If you take the guy that's out, true. He, look, he looks horrible. That's true. He looks ridiculous. Yeah. He looks like stop. Get away from me. Yeah. That is that's a strange man. Uh, <laughs> the the well, salsa is like such a beautiful dance. And style because when you go to like Latin America or Colombia, like I, I did, I lived in Chile for a month, uh, a couple years back, and basically what's was fascinating is that everyone, not just like a few, not like there's like a standout, everybody when a song comes on can get up, and and dance like a professional dancer. Really? Yeah, it's like everybody, everybody. It is like there was no in the culture. The there's club. no token white guy, and if there was, he was just like. Still, vibrant. still not that bad. <laughs> because at the end of the day, like dance, dance means something different to them. Like it's, it is, it can be a sexual thing, but m- more so how how old school I think like gentlemen court women, like right. how we look at that, like you know how that sexual kind of thing of like playing the man, playing that role, um, being strong, 
Um, and then the woman playing this like kind of sensual flower that you have to go and try to pick, right? Uh, so to speak. I don't know if that was a tasteful metaphor or not, but it's just really interesting to see because um, I wonder how it's going to be like in Spain. I didn't notice a lot of great dancing in Italy, though. Really? I did not notice. Huh. I, I mean, nothing. I mean, do you, do your, do your I mom and dad, wanna, do you, I, do you guys do some, some Italian kind of I don't know. I don't know any, house? like, Italian dance. Now that you, now that you mention that, I don't know of any. And, See, like, I've taken, like, I've taken a dance class in college where you learn, like, dances from, like, all over the world. They didn't mention and there Italy wasn't, there, there wasn't, like, an it, it, Italian dance. That's what I'm saying, man. I don't think Italy really. We're out there grinding the spaghetti. Uh, see, I we think... feeding the dancers. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I think. You guys are, like, being the dancers. You make an espresso before they go out, after they come back. <laughs> Yeah, you guys might not have done the dance thing. I don't know. I don't think it's. A, I don't think it's like a big thing. Plus, I don't know. Italian music just makes me think of like, uh, like a Dean Martin. Yeah, kind of like slower, like or like a like a Pavarotti kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like super like dancing music. Yeah, music. exactly. It's not very upbeat. I pray it will be half right. Yeah, no. I, I mean, that's a that's a really interesting one. I don't know. You're right. Now well, I think see. about it. All right, man. So you had you had a really interesting. I'm excited custom. to do some dancing while we're over there. Though. I agree. I agree. I'm excited. Or like something. The nightlife. Yes. I want to see what it's about. It's fun, man. It's gonna be so exciting. Um. So okay, talk to me, Nick. You you looked up a custom as well, bro. I, I found a few odd ones. I found like one interesting one, and uh, you you brought one to. The I'll table start with well. my more my less weird one. Okay. The one from actually Spain was they have this tomato war. Really. And um. It's basically a t- the the picture was just it looked like a big bloody mob of people, but it was just tomato <laughs> oh. smattering all over everyone. And some it started, they no one knows exactly why it started, but it happens the last Wednesday of August every year in Spain, Valencia, in the town we're going to. So we're just barely gonna miss it, but yeah, it's uh, wow. It was some event, something back in the day, that was you know very I think almost royal Ooh. high class event that younger adults like couldn't get their way into they couldn't be a part of it Mm. for whatever reason and so to kind of i don't know protest it or just ruin it you know just troll um they started a fake mob in like a town in the town square or something like that and there was a vegetable stand nearby so everybody just started grabbing tomatoes and probably other vegetables and just pegging each other with them wow so they were all covered in just tomato and the the picture it looked like a lot of fun now like it's i don't know actually Something you know, you get Bruh. hit by like a not really that ripe of a tomato, a little green still in there. That's what I'm saying, dog. Pegged in the <laughs> face with like something really like a baseball. Well, you know, they're also they're doing running with the bulls, right? Yeah, so that's I mean, like the week before we get there. So what I'm saying is these guys are like, they're going in. Yeah, like, they don't. If they're not worried about a bull these chasing them down the hallway, they're really sure. not giving a crap about a tomato. Yeah. Let me just say that. But you know, hey, it could be a really fun thing to do. I mean. I just am surprised that somebody threw a tomato and now, you know, they're doing it like thousands of years now later. That's the thing. I mean, now I'm going to start throwing tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the thought. That's like a rumor. And I now don't know if that's true. Could every true. day in the design building, we throw tomatoes uh, at each other. At 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. It all started when random little black man threw a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> the general manager, Todd Harris. And <laughs> it's Todd's birthday today. Actually. It is Todd's birthday. Happy birthday, Todd. We got we to gotta, we gotta get some for Todd. Todd's the man, dude. Yeah, he's one of the reasons I definitely wanted to come work at High Res for sure. Todd's the first. Todd's the first guy I ever emailed. That Todd was the. <laughs> you mean you never use email till you emailed Todd, Todd? Harris was the first person <laughs> I ever. No, my my how I got with High Res is like a, kind of a friend of a friend sort got of thing. It. His dad actually emailed Todd Harris for me. Oh. That was the first. That was the first dude. Wow. And they're like family friends, so he was like, "Hey, I remember you saying you guys were almost full in interns at the Super Bowl party," because like they're like on that type of level right. with these people. And I, it was just funny to see that email. But I ended up, you know, here I am now. Here but you are, dude. Through Todd Harris. We've and all... Then all the funny videos he does. Like, That's what, it. What, what was the one? My favorite one is the cosplay one. That's like to the oh. Pirates of the Caribbean parody song with Bart Drybear. God, I can't remember what it was. But it's like Todd's dressed up as like Chang'a, Freya, Odin, Oh, Cupid, yes, that Sylvanas. one. Yes, I He's have He's in the tree that. with the mustache, yes. dude. It's That's like, my favorite Todd video of all time. I think it's what's so funny is that Todd is such a straight guy, like such a Jason Bateman kind of like straight guy in like real life. But he has like, but he's not really, which is funny. Yeah, like, you meet Todd, you, you wouldn't picture Todd in the Chonga no, outfit. No, no, no. Or up in the tree singing like, exactly. so honest. It's like, it's not, he's not really a straight guy. Like he's the straight guy when he needs to be like in business and in, yeah. like when he meets you just, but when you get to know him and you also like, 
see some of the stuff he does, you realize he's like a goof. He's a goofy yeah. dude, and it's I love that. I don't know. He's I'm, like he's like the he's like Andy the video guy's like go to. I need a funny executive. Oh yeah, in this video, he's perfect, or someone who's gonna go along or like do this appropriately. I'm not gonna lie, man. I've seen worse, like funny executives than Todd. I think Todd, if he if he tried, could act in actual movies as like a funny <laughs> like boss. Yeah, he could totally be in either a sitcom. Hor- horrible bosses three, Todd. Horrible bosses three. <laughs> Best bosses three. Yeah, no, seriously. Um, okay, so that was cool. So Mattia, what's what's the next one, dude? All right, so the next one is... Wait, let me do one, because mine's not that okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Here's what I thought was interesting. It was just a small one. From Venezuela. Uh, if you somebody invites you to their house, and you arrive on time, you're actually looking bad. Mm. You look, like, greedy or, like, eager, apparently, according to this article. So, like, fashionably reading. late? So, like, basically, when someone invites you, you're supposed to be 10 to 15 minutes late. Huh. Which is, like, kind of interesting, because it's just, like, like a, a job society... Interview? You know, <laughs> good question. I don't know. I'm not applying for any jobs in Venezuela soon, so I'm probably not going to look that up. But <laughs> I do agree that there could be some lines that it gets tricky. Does this apply? Somebody to in everything? the comments will let us know what's up. Seriously, but does that apply to everything? Like, if you're from Venezuela, like job interviews, like your girlfriend's like, "Come to bed," and she like really means now. But Hell yeah, like, fifteen. Yeah, minutes. fifteen <laughs> minutes left. Like, you know, call One me at three <laughs> means call me at three fifteen. Like, pick the kid up at two. Pick him up at two fifteen. Really, like all these important things. I don't know. I don't know. I'm questions. Let's see. Questions. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So this one's from like an Amazon tribe. And basically it's like one of those crazy like man rituals, like from a boy to a man type of thing. Like that's right. The Jews have like the bar mitzvah. Okay. This Amazon tribe, if you don't know what a bullet ant is, go look up what a bullet ant is. It is the most painful sting uh, of an insect on the index of insect stings. So is that that's a real index too? I think it is. Yeah, because that, that video we watched, he he climbed it. He, he basically oh he did. He started with something, then he did fire ants, and then blah blah blah. Tarantula hawk, bullet ant was at the top. So wait a second. He so, got stung by everything like all the way up. <clears throat> Although we saw a bunch of ants in that video, it was because it looked like a lot of ants took the index of pain. Are you saying that like it's, uh, it's it was mostly only like ants it's or? mostly ants and like wasps? Oh I wow, think. damn that type of stuff. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. God bless I thought a guy, snake too. would be up there or something. Oh, it's not an insect. Oh, yeah, you're right. In, in, you're right. Insect index. Okay, okay. I'd bad. be curious to see, like, you know, overall what's the... Overall index. I'd be curious about that, too. Is it like a great white biting your head Ooh. off? Is that the most painful thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different type of pain, but it's like, wow, my body's half gone. I, that it, hurts. What if it was, like, being digested by, like, a blue whale? Like, what if it was something you totally, totally like, left field? Like, getting butted to death off by the, a dolphin's I saw nose. a picture of a blue whale's heart. The other day, it's bigger than like what? it's like it's like the room that from like the floor to the ceiling, just like massive. Those animals, it's bro. nuts. Blue whales are nuts. Yeah. Anyway, this Amazon tribe bullet ant. What they do is they drug, they collect a bunch of these ants, drug them so they pass out, and they weave them into a glove. So basically, you have the glove. I'm gonna try to like show this with the camera. So okay. my finger is the bullet ant. They Grab. weave it so, like, the head and torso of this ant are sticking out of the glove, and then the part that, that is inside of the glove is, like, the bottom half of the ant with the stinger. So it's like this ant is, like, trapped in this glove, like, woven into this glove with the stinger stingers into, into where the your glove. going. And the guys have to put these things on, and then they, the ants wake up, and they're, it's like they're trapped, and they get pissed off because they can't move, and they're trapped, and then they just sting. They just sting the nuts off their hands, like, all both hands. Oh, my God. And the guys have to just do a dance for twenty minutes with these with these gloves on. What? Yeah, twenty minutes of just getting slaughtered by bullet ants. Which I don't know how they do, um, because we watched a video of one, a guy get stung by one and just lose his mind, and like his arm was just like useless after that. So I'm assuming their their arms are both like useless after that. But they have to do this not once. They have to do this twenty times. This ritual twenty times to be considered a man in this tribe. <laughs> Dear God. If that makes me a man, I'm a boy for life. The thing, yeah, that's the thing, though, because, like, it's like venom, right? So I'm just wondering, like, do they die from this? Like, after, you know, they get to, like, 12 and they die? Yeah, like, that dog. suck. When you start that, I know, right? <laughs> They've got no men in this tribe. We have a lot of men, but nobody over the age of 18 because that's, uh, unfortunately. Everyone you know, dies. Everyone dies. The process Yeah, on the way, yeah. And so, I mean, dude, that's actually really crazy. You know, it's, it's interesting because, like, that is uh, – 
a custom that could only be in the Amazon. Like that that's only yeah, the Amazon. Those like level. those like island or like isolated cultures like the transition to manhood. Yeah. That's crazy. Rituals. Would you rather do that or, you know, cuz I've heard this is like a legend. I mean, I don't know if it's actually true, but you know, in African, you know, tribes, they basically are like, yo, you got you get a spear, you go out in the jungle and you kill a lion and you become a man when you come back. It's would, like the Spartans. Would you rather me. would you rather go and try and kill a lion or just take this pain 20 times? Mm. It's like you probably won't die from the bullet ant. First of all, would I find any lions in the jungle? They find you, doc. I think uh, aren't lions like on the plains? Well, not the jungle. I mean, yeah, the plains. We're talking about Africa. I mean, the the you gotta get out the there safari. and kill a lion. Yeah. I don't know what I would, like. It depends if I would die. I take the, the ants, dog. I'd probably take the ants. I'm ants all the way. You don't mess with lions. You know. You know why lions chill in the in the grass like that, bro? Because nobody hunts them. They are literally the top dog. <laughs> they're just chilling. They literally are the top of the food chain. That's why they're called the king of the jungle. They have nobody to worry about. Every single per, every single the, other the thing in the jungle. To hunt for them. Exactly. It's, it's like that's life right there. They're chilling. I mean, I don't think you know. Eventually, lions do die, and you know, a lot of times, like, hey, if you're a wounded lion, people will pick on you. But if you're just in your prime, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. Which is a very rare feeling, I would imagine, in like, in nature. In nature. In nature. We are really weird because we don't like actively like go hard like about killing each other to stay alive. Yeah. Yet we are part of nature. Like whether we try to think we're not, like we live off of breathing and eating the same things as everybody else. It's just crazy that we don't have to deal with the pressures of like. Yeah, because we're literally slow survival. and we're not that strong. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. And I, I am speaking for myself. I know there are some people who are actually dealing with survival. So I don't mean to like speak for you in that. But in terms of like you know, oh, if I don't kill him, he's killing me, kind of a thing, like on a daily basis, right? right? You know, or if I don't kill this person, I can't eat today. We're like, not struggling against much of the rest of the food chain. Sure, sure, exactly. Yeah. Which is pretty. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, this thing is, man. All right, dude. Well, Nick, let's make things. In- I think we made things interesting today. Definitely. I uh, I actually like this style a lot more. Um, and we're going to continue to iterate as well um, as we wrap up the podcast for today. The conversation nullness was much better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that's you, a word. Well, it, it, conversationalness. I like it. Because I think that's what podcasts are about. It's like yeah. having conversations and like conversations that it you. It started would... out like the first episode we did was like you were like asking me questions. Exactly. It's it like an interview. Me answering your question, like getting interviewed, right? And then I was like, well, this feels weird. Like you should definitely, let me just like you should ask talk you the well. same question. Like you should definitely talk. And then it just kind of felt like you said, like, a cast. Like, I was talking, my opinion, Evan's opinion. Yeah. My opinion, Evan's opinion. <laughs> and then we just, like, kind of went through the list. But this feels this feels a little bit better. feels definitely a lot better. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts. And uh, it's definitely an experiment for uh, us, for the channel, um, and, and moving forward, how we want to do things. So if you have any, any suggestions about, A, what you'd like to see on the show, uh, how you'd like to see it, and kind of any topics that you'd want us to cover next time in terms of the after the break, more of the interesting type topics, we'll call it that. Let me know in the comment section below. If you guys want to stay tuned to my stuff, obviously you could subscribe here. Uh, you could follow me on twitch.tv slash Day, Twitter at Rainday Gaming. Of course, Nick, you've got a bunch of stuff you want to shout out for everybody yeah, as well. Yeah, my Twitter, Hiro's Pretty Hair, same thing. Uh, it's my Twitch handle as well. Uh, and I do have my YouTube, which is just Pretty Hair, Just if you're interested in that. Is it just Pretty Hair or just... I think it's like Pretty Hair Gaming. Oh, Pretty Hair Gaming? Nice. I'm not sure. Nice, dude. Can't remember. Gaming bros. I like it. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Again, subscribe to stay tuned to next time. And as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming. We'll see you all in the realm. Later.